Welcome to the Living Rock Podcast. It is so good to be together. And um, this point in time, many are away and some still need to be at home. But lots of us are here. And uh, together we are in the midst of an important time of regathering, of coming together around Jesus, of regathering and, and of coming together around Jesus. And whenever that happens, it's always really significant. Whenever we come together around Jesus, it's significant. That's right. And whenever we come around Jesus, it's powerful. And also, and we need to understand this, whenever we come around Jesus, get to come together around Jesus, it's always contested. Because it matters so much that we gather together, that we have enemies that will do all they can to try and keep us apart. Just have that thought in mind, because uh, I want to continue from some of the things we started last week. And... I said last week that the context for sharing was that there's lots of noise all around us, lots of voices and opinions and commentators and critics, armchair critics and theorists and those with um, their own agendas, lots of noise, lots of demands on our time and things are getting busier for all of us, Uh, lots of demands on our attention and lots of choices about how we reset our lives, how we reset our working patterns, how we reset our calendars and our involvement in the church. And so it's vital that in the midst of the noise and the demands and the choices, that we choose really carefully who we listen to and how we respond. And um, I, hear the, I hear the Lord's voice just speaking to us three really simple words. Come to me. Above all the noise, above all the other invitations, above all, above all the other uh, potential uh, events and d- things in our diaries, above all the other choices, Jesus, above them all, invites us to come to me. And those simple words of Jesus, I believe, are really profound and important for us at this time. And uh, last week, uh, I draw our attention to five occasions that Jesus' voice rises above all the others and he calls people to come to him. Just out of interest, how many that are here this morning were also here last week? And how many, on the other hand, are here this morning but weren't here last week? Okay, so I just feel it'd be really helpful just to recap and to restate some of the things before adding a couple more invitations from Jesus and before we then break bread together. And if you're watching from home, we're so glad you're with us, uh, so glad that we are able to join together like this and just want to encourage you to prepare at home also to break bread with us in a few minutes' time. So Jesus, first of all, in Matthew 11 says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus uses a couple of words when he makes this invitation to describe weariness and exhaustion and being sort of weighed down by things. And his invitation to us at the end of a time that's been tough, whether it's physical tiredness or mental tiredness or soul weariness, is to come to him and he wants to give us rest. I I was looking up um, just this morning, actually, the different words that are used for that verb come. There are so many different, um, different words used, but... On a few occasions, the word has this real strength in it, and this is one of them, where Jesus is saying, basically, come hither. I don't know whether you use that kind of language in (laughs) day-to-day, come hither, but uh, that was how this word was described. It's a come hither. It's it's almost like an exclamation, and it has has more of a sense of of a call than an invitation. 
It is an invitation, but, but Jesus is calling us to come to him. And I want to really encourage you this morning. He wants us to come to him and be rested, to find rest, not just for our bodies, but for our souls. He wants to put a rest upon us, a rest within us, a refreshing within us. And it matters so much that, that it's, if I can say, it's more than an invitation. He's summoning you. He's summoning us, saying, come to me. I want to give you rest. Then we read secondly in Luke 6 that uh, Jesus stood and he said, uh, everybody, sorry, he says this, everybody who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, they're like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. Jesus says, if you come to me, if you take my words, if you'll dig down deep and build your lives and build our churches on his word, we will be rock solid. He, he invites us to come to him because he wants to make us strong. And we've seen, haven't we, how vital it is that our foundations are strong. We've, we've seen, we've read, we've heard with great um, upset how many things have been uprooted in the last year and so. Yeah. How many lives, how many churches, and we realize afresh how essential it is yes. that our life, our church, is built on clear and solid foundations. And I said last week, I want to say it again, I, I, I do think that at the end of this time of, of robbery and theft, yeah. the next big move of the enemy is, is to sow into as many as he can the lie that it doesn't really matter if we don't gather together. Because yeah. we've cause we kind of got on without it for a long time, but it does really matter. Yes. It really, really matters. Don't be fooled. Don't let him isolate you. That's right. It really matters that the house is built on strong foundations and you're part of the house. And then the third invitation from Jesus, it says on the last and greatest day of the festival, in, in John 7, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty, let the prophetic word resonate as you hear this now. Thank you, Nick. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. For whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, rivers of living water will flow from within him, from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. He's inviting us to drink deeply of living waters that will overflow in our lives. Rivers that will not just refresh us, but will go out from us. The, 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 it's almost as if the springs are for us, the rivers are for others. And then a fourth invitation in uh, Matthew 14. It says, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out, out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came to Jesus. There's an invitation. There's a, there's a longing in the heart of the Lord that we would come to him, step out of the boat, and he wants to give us courage. He wants to make us brave. He wants to make us bold. He wants to deliver us from timidity. Yeah. Come to me. Yes, it is I. Come to me. Come on the water. I know I'm not going into any of the details of these, but um, I want to put these invitations together in a moment. The fifth one, in Mark 10, lots of children in the room this morning, 
So grateful to Lisa for um, her resources for our kids today. Here's another verse, Mark 10, verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. It was great last Sunday to pray for all our children. And there's a special invitation, children, and all of us who are like little children, amen. What do you want to be when you grow up, David? No idea. There's a special invitation to all our children, our younger children, our teenage children. Jesus knows you, loves you, cares for you, invites you to come to him just as you are because he wants to put his hand on your life, cover you, protect you, bless you. So Jesus is inviting us. He's urging us. At times, he's summonsing us to come to him, to gather around him, and to receive from him rest if we're weary, strength if we've been battered, living water if we're thirsty, courage if we felt fearful, and a blessing for all our children, all our youth, and all of us who are young in heart. And that invitation is individual, and it's corporate, and is there anybody in the room who feels maybe one of those things is even a little bit relevant to you this morning? Yep. Yep. Amen. There's an invitation from Jesus to come to him. And these five invitations are so that in coming to him, primarily so that we will receive blessing and benefit, so that we will receive rest and strength, and living water, and courage. I I believe the heart of Jesus is to restore the months that the locusts have eaten. And these invitations are for us, because Jesus is a great shepherd, and he loves us, as we've heard this morning, and he knows just what we need, now and always. So I'm encouraging you, in your heart again, to make space This morning, for everything the great shepherd wants to lavish upon and into your life. But the great shepherd also loves the world. And there's another invitation I want us to look at, which helps to complete the picture. It's in Matthew 4, verses 18 to 20. And here... It says Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee and he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. This is the first time, actually, as we read through the Gospels, this is the the very first occasion that Jesus invites and urges people to come to him. This comes before all those other invitations. And it's another, come hither. It's that word again, come hither. He's calling them to come to him so that he can equip, equip them so that they can go from him. Look at the text, it's on the screen. He's calling them to come to him so that he can equip them to go, so that he can send them. He wants, them, he wants us to receive rest and strength and, and living waters and courage and be blessed and then go into the world in the good of all those things and share the invitation of Jesus to tell our friends, to tell our families, Jesus can give you rest and strength, and living water, and courage, and blessing. Jesus says, come and follow me. It it has the sense of, come behind me. Come and and walk behind me. It's it's more of a demand than an invitation. It's it's almost more of what a prophet would say than a rabbi would have said. Come, Come and be behind me. Come and follow me. And it's a call to 
Well, you know, the next few verses, it says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. And then the next verse talks about the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and how they immediately left everything, left their father, left the boat in, with the hired men, and immediately followed Jesus. Jesus is saying, put aside every other dependency. Come and follow me, because I want, you, I want to send you, I want you to go and make fishers of men. And that's the, the phrase there. He, said, I want to, he says, I'm going to send you in this version. But most versions say, I want to make you. I will make you fishers of men. Or I will show you how to fish for men. Or I will turn you into fishers of men. The, the message translation says, I'm going to make a new kind of fisherman out of you. A new kind of fisherman. And I love the context of this. Just If you have your Bibles, just, just look at... The bit just before this, Matthew 4, verse 17, this is where Jesus begins to preach, repent, for the kingdom of God is coming amongst you. And here is Jesus making that declaration, I've come to bring the kingdom of God to change the world. And here he is at the, at the start of his team building exercise choosing the first four members of his kingdom-advancing, world-changing team. And who does he choose? Four local fishermen. Four ordinary men. And he expands their whole concept of fishing. He's going to change them from fishermen to fishers of men. He chooses ordinary people, just like us, in regular jobs, doing regular things. But he transforms our very sense of what we're here to do. That's why he chose me. Because I was ordinary. That's why he chose you, Greg, because you're ordinary. Well, you've got a great wife. He, choo <laughs> so have I. he chooses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And I, I just love that phrase in the message. I'm going to make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I, want to I hope I can convey this, that he, he wants to take us as we are, with our skills, with our passions, with our burdens, with, with our instincts even. And he wants to upgrade, supercharge, promote those things into a much bigger dimension. He wants to send us with a new anointing to reach the world. He wants to build our church to represent and to be filled with a new kind of teacher, a new kind of nurse, a new kind of carer, a new kind of student, a new kind of pupil, a new kind of policeman, a new kind of parent, a new kind of neighbour, a new kind of friend. He wants to use us with whatever we have in our hands. Like he said to Moses, what's that in your hand, Moses? It's my staff. It's, it's the ordinary thing I carry, carry around with me all the time to do my ordinary work, to do what I do every day. This is, this is the thing I use all the time. And God transforms it into something amazing to help Moses become a shepherd of a, of a, of a nation. He wants to take what's just going on in our lives our youth, he wants to take you just as you are, with just what's in your hand, and, and kind of upgrade it all and promote it all into a much bigger dimension. A new kind of whatever you are. Add your own thing at the end of that. A new kind of retired person. A new kind of, of dog walker. I don't know why I said that. Well, I do actually. Our neighbour's a dog walker. That's why I said it. He wants to tell you this morning that all of us are in full-time ministry. All of us are in full-time ministry. And he wants to fill our church with new kinds of people 
who are anointed to do the good works he's prepared in advance for us to do. Come to me. Or in this case, come follow me. Because I want you to become fishers of men. I love that Jesus doesn't complicate it. He's not inviting them into the classroom, into a college. He's inviting them to be with him, to learn from him, to see him doing things, to long to do them themselves. It's simple. And as you've heard a few times lately, simplicity is absolutely key for us in this new day, this new season. You and I are made for mission. Made for mission. And let's, let's come to him as we are. And let's let him make us really fruitful as we spend time with him. We'll soon catch his heart. We soon catch his burden of, of love and compassion for those that don't know him. As the Father sent me, Jesus says, so I send you. I want to send you. This is such an important time of regathering. But it's also a vital time of ingathering. The harvest is never four months away. It's always here and now. It's always our friends, our family, our neighbours, our contacts, our, our colleagues, those who are part of our lives, those who are watching us, those who are wishing they had some of the rest and the strength and the living waters and the courage and the blessing that they see in you. So there's an invitation this morning to come to Jesus and let him take us as we are and, and turn us into something newly anointed to be a blessing to those that we live and share our lives with. And as we gather around the table in a moment, I want to in encourage us to respond to all or any of those six invitations. As you receive the bread, as you receive the wine, that you'd maybe even just stand to your feet at that moment and just say, Lord, I'm responding to you this morning. I'm responding to your invitation or your summons, your, um, your demand on my life, your desire to bless. I'm responding to that, Lord, this morning, just saying, here I am. To be, to be rested, to be refreshed, to be strengthened, to be made brave, made courageous, to be blessed, Lord, to, to be um, filled with your spirit afresh. And Lord, here I am to say, Lord, turn me into a new kind of lawyer, doctor, friend, dog walker. So we're going to break bread today and we're going to use, use the Lord's table as a, as a place to respond to him. Yeah, but if I, there, there isn't a, a text for the screen for this, but in John 21, I found another occasion that Jesus uses the come hither word. I was really blessed to find this. John 21, it's, the, it's right at the end of, of John's gospel when Jesus is in his, um, in his resurrected body and on this occasion, they've been out fishing, pretty despondent, uh, not sure what's going on, not sure whether he's he really alive or not at this point. And, and we get this great story about the, 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 the miraculous catch of fish. John 21, verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. And it was full of large fish, 153 I love the fact they counted them so, they, so we could have a permanent record of the scale of the miracle. There was 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, come hither and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. I love that Jesus says, come. And then he came. And he met them. Around that charcoal fire. Yeah. We've always believed this is a, this is a rendezvous with Jesus. Yeah, he comes to meet us here. And he comes to have a meal with us. And this story we just read, it, it, it says at the beginning, it's early in the morning. It's a new day. 
I can't think of a better way to start a new day than to celebrate Jesus' invitation around his table. And this is a new day for us, and for some of you this morning, it might be very significant. A fresh start, a clean sheet. For many of us, it might be simply in response to those invitations. Lord, for me, this is a new day. I'm responding. I'm getting stuck in. I'm hearing your invitation. Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm going to put aside my timidity. This is a new day. I'm going to make myself available, Lord, for my friends to be, to be one you can send into the world. This is a new day, Lord. And I trust there'll be many such responses as we come to the table this morning. Thanks for joining us today. Search for us online and get information about upcoming events and more great teaching.